injured to see how far this needs to go down. Okay, you turn your head straight. Go from your nose to there and down to your side board. Okay. Whether in a hospital setting or in home care, nasogastric or NG tubes are a common nursing responsibility. These responsibilities include inserting nasogastric tubes, maintaining their proper function, and assuring patient comfort and safety. Hi, Terry. Dr. James has been in and she's left orders for you to have a nasogastric or NG tube to go into your stomach and it will relieve the pressure. We're going to hook it up to suction, okay? Okay. So I'll get the equipment ready and be back and we'll do it. Okay. This program covers the nasogastric tube, its insertion for decompression, and the nursing measures needed to maintain system integrity, patient comfort, and safety. The tube used in this procedure is a Salem sump. The doctor ordered this tube for decompression. Wash hands before and after all nursing procedures. Gather the necessary protective equipment. Additional equipment needed are water-soluble lubricating jelly, pH test strips to measure acidity of the gastric aspirate, tongue blades, small flashlight, 20 to 50 milliliter catheter tip syringe or a septo bulb, non-allergenic tape or attachment device to hold the tube in place, safety pin and rubber band, a clamp, suction machine or pressure gauge if wall suction is used, towel, glass of water with straw, tissues, normal saline, skin prep and tincture of benzoin as needed, a basin, stethoscope, and clean gloves. Explain the procedure to the patient to reduce anxiety and promote cooperation. I got everything ready to put the tube down. Now it will go down uh, real easily if you can help me out a bit. And when we actually put it down, I'm going to lubricate the end of it. It's a flexible plastic tube. And then I'm going to have you take a little sip of water as it's going down, and you can help swallow it down into your stomach. Now, if you have any trouble at any time, any distress, just raise your hand up so I can stop, and we'll take a little break, okay? Okay. In advance, it is good to establish a distress signal with the patient in the event the procedure is not tolerated. Raise the bed to a comfortable working height. Provide privacy for the patient. If possible, stand on the right side if right-handed, and on the left side, if left you know, hand. Just look at your belly and listen. Insertion of the tube begins with patient assessment. Observe the patient's abdomen for distension. Auscultate for absence or presence of bowel sounds. Palpate for rigidity and pain. Just feel quite distended. Raise the head of the bed to a high fowler's position if health allows. Here, I'm just going to raise the head of the bed up here so the tube will slip down a little easier. Support the head with a pillow. Yeah. Swallowing is easier in this position and gravity will help in passage of the tube. Place a towel or drape on the patient's chest. Provide the patient with a tissue and basin. If the patient is confused, disoriented, or unable to follow commands, request assistance from another staff member. Hi, Terry. Hi, Helga. Do you need any help? No, I think we're ready to do this. Okay, well, I'm not far, so if you need anything, let me know. Okay, thanks, Connie. Well, Terry, have you had any trauma, any injuries? Do you have any history of bloody noses? Review the patient's health history for facial or nasal trauma or surgery. Close one nostril and then another with a finger and compare the force of exhalations. Well, 
use the left side because there's more airflow that way. Okay. A small flashlight can be used to observe any obstructions. If the patient is able, have them blow his or her nose. The nasogastric tube should be inserted into the uninvolved nasal passage or the side with the greatest airflow. To attach the tube to the nose, prepare a tube attachment device. Or use a piece of tape approximately four inches long. Split one end lengthwise in the middle about two inches. Place the tape close at hand so it can be easily reached. If it's too bad to package and measure so we know how far to put it down. Measure the length of the tube to be inserted. Begin at the tip of the nose, to the earlobe, to the xiphoid process. To your xiphoid process. Right there. Just going to mark that. Mark the length of the tube to be inserted with a piece of tape which can be easily removed. Okay. Some Don protective equipment at this time. Curl four to six inches of the tube and release to facilitate the downward curve of the nasopharynx. Lubricate the end of the tube with a water-soluble lubricant. Remember, I'm going to have you take a sip of water. I'll let you know exactly when. Remember the distress signal. Okay, here we go. Insert the tube through the nares gently and slowly with the curved end pointing downward. When possible, the head is tilted back to aid insertion. The tube is pointed toward the ear, and the curve of the tube allows passage along the nasal floor, preventing misdirection. When resistance is felt, gently press downward and advance the tube. Do not force the tube beyond the resistance. If resistance is met, rotate the tube and try to advance again. Advance the tube just past the nasopharynx while rotating the tube toward the opposite nares. Pause and allow the patient to rest. Unless contraindicated, ask the patient to take sips of water. Swallowing helps to advance the tube. You should take a little sips of water now and swallow this on down as best you can. Advance the tube to the correctly measured distance. Almost there. Okay, great. Let me take the water from you now. Here, we'll just fasten it in place. Okay, Terry. Remove the tape marker and anchor the tube with the attachment device. Or split tape. Check the tube for placement. Attach a catheter tip syringe to the end of the tube. Ask the patient to talk. If the patient is unable to talk, the tube may have passed through the vocal cords. Inspect the back of the mouth and posterior pharynx for a coiled tube. A soft tube may coil, 
rather than advancing down the esophagus. Insert 20 to 30 milliliters of air while auscultating the upper left quadrant of the abdomen. A whoosh or gurgling sound may indicate correct placement. Placement verification should not include auscultation alone, but should be combined with other methods. Check with agency policy. Gastric content analysis may be used. To check for gastric contents, gently aspirate and obtain a small sample. Observe color. Gastric contents are generally green and cloudy, but may be brown, tan, bloody, or even off-white. Check the aspirate for pH with a color-coded pH strip. Apply a small amount of contents to the pH strip. The pH of gastric contents range from 1 to 4 on a scale of acidity. A pH reading greater than 4 generally indicates improper placement. If placement checks indicate the tube is not in the stomach, advance the tube 1 to 2 inches and recheck for placement. Once tube placement is verified, clamp the end of the tube or connect it to appropriate suction. Secure the tube to the patient's gown, looping a rubber band around the tube and pinning it to the gown. Unless ordered otherwise, the head of the bed should remain elevated 30 degrees or greater. Okay, Terry, that's all secure. Now your nose and throat should start to feel better. You can get accustomed to that being in there. Okay, Terry, well, when you need to get up and ambulate, walk around, we can clamp the end of it, take it off suction for a few minutes, okay? Okay. All right. Thanks, Helga. You're welcome, Terry. The nurse provides frequent oral and nasal care. Ensure that the tube is not rubbing or eroding the side of the nostril. Provide water-soluble lubricant to prevent drying. Maintain patient comfort. Frequently check with the patient to make sure the tube is secure and allows freedom of movement. Discontinue suction before abdominal assessment is performed. Terry, I want to get a listen and see if your stomach's waking up yet. Assess bowel sounds. Note any distension, pain, or tenderness. And there's a couple little gurgles. Turn this back on. Okay, Irrigation may be required when the tube is blocked or occluded, or following the giving of a medication. After checking the doctor's order and agency policy, equipment and supplies are prepared at the bedside. This includes clean gloves, a catheter-tipped syringe, appropriate irrigating solution and protective towel. A mask and gown may be needed in some cases. Draw up 30 milliliters of the irrigant into the syringe. Disconnect the tubing from suction. Verify placement and connect the syringe. Note that the small lumen or blue section of this tube is an air vent and should not be used as an irrigation port. Insert the tip of the syringe with tip down and slowly instill the solution. Be sure not to force the fluid. If gentle pressure fails to clear the resistance, turning the patient may be indicated. I'm having some resistance here. Why don't you turn towards your left a little bit, Terry? Let's see if that'll... Okay, that did it. There we go. That seemed to have 
taking care of the obstruction. We connect the suction. Now let's hook it back up to suction. When suction is not available or not used, a syringe is used to aspirate irrigant. The amount of aspirate may be more than the amount instilled. If this is the case, the excess is considered output. If the aspirate is less than the amount instilled, it is considered intake. Note the color and amount of drainage. This information is documented in the patient record. Finish by removing gloves, washing hands, and documenting the procedure. As with all procedures, wash hands before proceeding. Terry, we get to take your NG tube out, Dr. Oh, James. Let's just in and rotate the orders. Okay. Oh. Okay. Equipment needed for the removal of the nasogastric tube includes a disposable pad, tissues, clean disposable gloves, a 50 milliliter syringe, towel or washcloth and a plastic disposable bag. Discontinue suction at this time and assure the bed is elevated appropriate for patient condition. Explain the procedure to the patient and place the disposable pad across the front of the patient to protect linen from any spillage or gastric contents and provide tissues as needed. If agency policy allows, Draw 30 to 50 milliliters of air into the syringe and instill into the gastric tube. This step clears gastric contents from the tube and prevents their drainage into the respiratory system. Disconnect the tube from suction. Air down those. Remove tape or attachment device from the nose. Ask the patient to take a deep breath and hold. This closes the glottis to prevent aspiration of any gastric contents. And let's just pull it on out now. Take a big breath and hold it. Kink or pinch the tube to prevent leakage into the respiratory tract. Inspect the tube to verify intactness. Provide oral and nasal care and clean linen if necessary. Measure gastric contents and note color and consistency. Dispose of equipment according to agency policy. Terry, well, you're free to get up and move about now without the tube, and we'll be bringing you a tray of food here pretty soon. Oh, good. Thanks, Helga. You're welcome. Record appropriate information including color, amount, consistency, and patient's response to the procedure. Include related patient assessment information. Yeah, everything's going really well. I finally get to eat some real dinner tonight. Oh, it's here now. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hey, Terry. You've done real well with the car liquid, so you get some real food tonight. There you go. Oh, that looks great. Thanks a okay. lot, Helga. You're welcome. Enjoy it. Okay. The nurse plays an important role in caring for the patient with a nasogastric tube. Careful attention to these nursing measures, support the patient during the procedure, and enable a positive outcome.